May the force be with you is a phrase used to wish a person well to overcome a challenge. The invitation in this podcast, May the Life Force Be With You, is to explore what it means to truly feel alive, to appreciate the physical, emotional and spiritual connection to our energy, and finally to understand how this impacts who you are and all that you do. May this conversation inspire you to thrive. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of May the Life Force Be With You. And today we are joined by Kirsty Nazare. So Kirsty is a soul-led woman. She's been called a spiritual healer priestess, a modern medicine woman, but feels labels don't matter as it's the essence that's key and her work revolves around the heart and brings it all back to the mother. She's been exploring ancient and modern wisdom traditions for 30 years and it's been a humbling and illuminating path. Her deepest wish is that all humans know the beauty of feeling connected to something bigger in a way that enhances their lives and they remember the miracle of existence and to be connected to the earth of their body and the planet we get to call home. I feel there's so much intention already set just in that introduction uh, and we're really excited to have you join us um, this morning, Kirsty. Karila. Hello. Yeah, there's a beautiful energy in that introduction. And I'm really excited for this conversation. We often say on May the Life Force Be With You that each conversation is an activation. And we, Fiona, just intuitively felt that Kirsty should be the one to set the intention for this activation. So over to you, Kirsty. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Karila. Thank you, Fiona. Hi, everyone. Um, oh, it's a joy to be here. So let's set the intention. You know, that's this this from the head to a heart. The heart is one of the longest ones that I've particularly found, but it's a call that yearns from our soul. And I want to that this conversation is each of us and everyone that listens into hearing the call of their soul, of connecting into their deeper essence and wisdom that is is right there for each and every one of us. And that there's a remembrance that it can be light along the way because there are challenges when we move from the head to the heart, but they are all worth it. So let's liberate ourselves and feel that connection into the heart more and more. And let's take a deep breath. Thank you. Feel that. <laughs> I would like to thank you for that intention. It felt very, very powerful. And what jumped out at me is when you said there are challenges um, of moving from the head to the heart. And I felt like in that moment, you might have been thinking of some of your personal challenges. <laughs> <laughs> and so let's get personal. <laughs> what are the personal challenges for you of moving from the head to the heart? A conditioning, imprinting, what I think I should be doing, um, trying to fit in, <clears throat> you know, modeling behaviors outside of myself when the soul is going, no, there's another way. And that is challenging if you are, you know, I, I moved countries a lot as a child, and so I was always adapting to different environments. And <clears throat> whilst that gave me some really useful and powerful skills, it also meant that in order to fit in, there was an aspect of me that would be watching what was going on on the outside so that I didn't say I could fit in and so I felt safe. So breaking the conditioning that I have. Uh, wanted to take on and you know my soul keeps calling me forwards to break the to break the imprinting that I've agreed to or contracts that I've agreed to so that I can experience life in 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 its whatever this soul path has wanted which is more freedom and liberation and breaking status quo 
uh, because the status quo, as I've experienced, has meant that sometimes I've contorted myself and um, restricted myself, which means I've had health issues and, um, you know, suffocating sort of experiences, which is suffering to my soul. So that's kind of a brief (laughs) overview of some of the challenges of of moving from the head to the heart, really listening to the heart and the soul. And and I've taken, I mean, we can go into this if it feels appropriate. Once I've taken those leaps and I've said yes and I've listened to watch what happens to the energy and the life force both in me and the world around me, how it all opens up is 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 grace, is 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 a relief. So to listen to the heart and give it more voice. It's, you know, I'm now 50, so I can really reflect back and see on life. Oh, okay. I see where I, I see where I had to experience challenges, experience the loss, experience the grief, experience the pain of contorting, and then looking back where I've said yes. How everything, you know, it's, I remember that I am part of something bigger. Mm. I find the word contorting so powerful. It's so onomatopoeic in a way. Like when you're you're saying it, it's just like, oh yeah. <laughs> I think we can all resonate with those times that we like contort, and then you think about it, and you're just like, wow. So when you make a contorted choice, you're really stopping the flow of life force in that moment you know it's such a it's such a contraction and a twisting and a actual block of the life force being able to move through that choice or that's what's coming to me as 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 you're saying contorting it's really really interesting I've never thought of that word before in that context just because it's so energetically onomatopoeic in a way of just like you can, <laughs> yeah you can feel like how that shape of contorting literally stops the it, it, it like twists the space in which the life force energy flows and and like I can literally feel that word as a description for mm-hmm. how to block <laughs> the flow of energy and the flow of life or so um yeah it just really jumped out at me as a as a kind of profound concept of why we have to unimprint ourselves or or be true to ourselves um it really spoke to me that word for sure I I had the experience, I, that's how I experience it as well. And I don't know if anybody else has ever had this, but I kind of had this weight on my chest for years and I would have conversations around it. I would feel it. I would do the different various tools and, um, you know, practices, but it weighed there so long. And that's, that's how I realized what it was. It was me contorting. That's the best word to describe it. And so that weight on my chest, when I'm not listening, and the longer I didn't listen, the more constricted it felt. And then, it, you know, I kind of see it as sort of this, almost like the soul is like trying to go, you know, I'm trying to grow and come out. And then it's like, no, you've got to stay down. You know, uh, anyway, that's it's. It is a powerful word and it is a it is a great signpost for me now when I realize that oh hold on what what actually what actually needs to happen here who do I need to listen to is it my limiting beliefs is it the is it the uh you know what's going on so that contortion it's an ongoing journey it's a lifelong journey i feel <laughs> as we shed the layers of uh, imprinting. It's interesting because there's quite a strong force in contortion. And as, as you're speaking, I'm like, yeah, because the soul is strong. Like you have to work quite hard to go against the st- the soul. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You have to literally twist and contort yourself. 
to go against the, the will of the soul. Yes, yes. It okay. uses up a lot of energy, actually. It's like twisting yourself against the current of your soul. It is hard work. Well, that, it is hard work. And that's the exhaustion you're talking of that I experienced mm. and the health issues. And each time you, I've said yes to things, like I'm currently in something where I, you know, again, talking about breaking the status quo, but my soul really wanted this. And I'll tell you a little bit more about it to kind of give it context. But it was, I was so tired. I was so exhausted. I was doing all of the, in inverted commas, healing work to look after my body. And um, the what my soul wanted to do was to experience more and to um, move to another country for a while. But my imprinting was like, you can't do that. You've got a daughter here, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. How are you going to do that? And what does it bring up? And you've got all these responsibilities. And But it got, I was in so, I, I just couldn't say no anymore. And I said, yes. And then everything is moving around it. My energy is coming back. I'm feeling, you know, it's like, wow. It does take a lot to suppress. And, um, you know, and this is part of what I'm working through is expectations and imprinting and conditioning and going against the grain and it's more painful not to listen to their soul. <laughs> well that that's what I'm finding interesting, Kirsty, when you're you're saying that is that, you know, it's 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 the soul that's saying, do more, be more, be more expansive. And it's the the um resp- I, I I wrote down responsibility just as you said the word. It's I just felt this weight of responsibility that kind of restricts that push and pull between what you you feel that you you want to do with an open heart and and no restrictions and no boundaries and no contortions versus what you think you should be doing. So so is is that where that misalignment is? It's in that you th- that there's an expectation of what we should be doing versus what we truly want to feel and live to honor our own path. Is that where the rub lies? I think so. Yes. I think for, I mean, I can only speak to my own experience, but there is this expectation I've placed on myself that my life, and the expectation is, is the should, you know, what I've picked up along the way thinking, okay, this is what I should be doing. It's the imprinting. It's, it's for me, it's, it's not what my soul is asking for. And yeah, so there is the, I think think that's what I would Yeah. Sorry, Fiona. Yeah, that's what I was feeling. It's not a struggle. So we have this perception, perhaps, that it's a struggle to fulfill our goals, that it's hard, that things need to be hard. But actually, the hard part is because we're not just being open, honest and allowing in what we truly want. It, it, so I'm, I'm having this kind of epiphany that this, the struggle is not in trying to achieve what we, we want or our dream. It's actually the that resistance and that um lack of of ability to get to our end goal is created by our own barriers that we put in our way that is the blocking energy it's not coming from external it's not coming from anything other than our belief that we can have what our heart wants yeah like it's harder to go against the soul than it is to go with the soul <laughs> yeah thank you i was trying to find the right words that i'm feeling miserably this morning sorry because then you're fighting your own soul. soul do you know what i mean you're fighting yes. your own soul you're fighting yourself yeah and <laughs> and you're you're putting all of this energy into fighting your own soul and yet you know i feel like all three of us are the people who actively try to choose our soul and have actively left what you might It's get out of your own way is the message, isn't it? It's get yeah. out of your own way. Trust. Trust your heart. Trust what is coming up for you. And the it's the resistance that causes the pain in denying what you actually want. Absolutely. But I think it's, it's also this... Um, you know, even when you are doing it, because, you know, I feel like at the moment I'm really 
committed to what my soul wants and it's very against the grain I don't have an address you are Korean you know what I mean like I'm I'm really taking yeah. massive risks in my business and like all sorts of things but the imprinting still comes up and that's what I feel called to say is like even if you are following the call of your soul the collective imprinting is like what are you doing this is a terrible idea don't do this <laughs> like do you know what I mean it's like mm -hmm. it just you have to I I feel like it's it doesn't go away it's there but there is a it, it gives it it gives you an opportunity, gives me an opportunity and maybe you to breathe into it and to feel that. Oh, I don't know how to articulate what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> I mean, so, for example, Karila, right now, it, if I'm just, you know, sitting with your energy, you feel like there's an expansion there. There's a, you know, um, a joy. There's a, you know, you're being, you're fulfilling what it is that you want to do and be and how you live. And then of course we've got this kind of expectation that, you know, you need to have an address, you need to do this. And, you know, going against the grain doesn't mean it doesn't come up, of course, but your soul feels, I'm imagining, really very happy. And my, my soul is so happy, but then I notice that I have these freak out moments because in order to honor my soul at this time, I'm having to radically let go. Mm -hmm. And the, because it's impossible, you know, what I'm kind of meeting is the part of me that has hoarded, I would say, not in terms of possessions, although that was part of letting go of my house, but also in terms of responsibilities. And it's just impossible. I'm at capacity. I'm doing too much travel. So there's things that like projects that I committed to, responsibilities that I've had that I'm having to just hand over to source or God or let them go, let them die um, in order to be on this current and it, that is where the imprinting is coming up really, really strongly in me of like, oh, my God, I've just spent all this time building this and now I'm letting it crumble, <laughs> you know. Um, I really and, do know what you're talking about. It's, yeah, it's and I, I just feel it's important to say it because I think sometimes people think like, oh, when you make the decision, it's easy. It's not easy. Like the imprints don't go away once you've made the decision. They kind of come with you, you know? You have to keep overcoming them. Well, the, the, you know, this death and rebirth cycle is, it's, it, it is a, an expansion and also it, it is the cycle of, of grieving what has been in order for the new to come forwards as well. And it's a brave path. It's a brave path because you get to meet not only your stuff, what needs to be let go of and let things, well, we could tend to want to grip on and, and our, you know, naturally our brain wants to keep us safe, right? So that's its job. And it doesn't care if you're happy or not. It just wants to keep you in the comfort zone and safe. And that's its job. And then you come up you know, not against it, but like going, okay, we need to do this. And it's like, what the, no, um, what you're going to let go of this. And yeah, it, I think this is part of the journey of being able to experience all of these things, mm. the different states. And I don't want to romanticize it because, you know, I'm calling this my emergent Phoenix phase. Like you, Karila, I'm letting go of my house, my belongings. I'm moving abroad. My daughter's moving with her dad. Where and are you moving to? Sri Lanka. Wow. Wow. And That's it's short term. Me. Why why Sri Lanka? Can we ask? Why 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 is that calling to you? Well funnily enough, it was more that my soul was calling for changing the status, like wanting there was something more that needed to happen for this soul and I was feeling very trapped here and it was like all the doors were closing you know god universe it was like 
every single thing. My my business wasn't working out in the way that I thought it would. New new things were being born, and it was like I can't do that anyway. This opportunity came for me to go and be in Sri Lanka, and it will be for three to four months. But it does require that I let go of my home. My daughter's in school here, so she'll move with her dad, and it's a friend of mine um, who has given me this opportunity to be in their place there and support them with some some work out there <clears throat> and it's in it's on the edge of a nature reserve my nervous system is saying yes my soul is saying mm-hmm. yes it wouldn't have been my first choice necessarily but it's like okay there's there's something there calling and i i i had to answer the call so that's what's happening and it wasn't an easy process but it's happening. i can imagine it especially wasn't easy because of your daughter I mean, there is, you know, I Solara, who we've had on this show, got a soul calling to go and do loads of land work and got given quite a hard time because she left her teenage kids to go and do that. Mm. Obviously, she left yeah. them with their dad. <laughs> like, she didn't just abandon them. But, like... I know, it's weird, right? There is this societal <laughs> pressure, especially, I think, if you're a woman, that, like, mm. you should not be leaving your kids and you are your whole life is meant to be orientating around them and their needs. And I can imagine that the conditioning around that choice was one of the hardest because of society's expectation upon your responsibilities. Mm. Yeah, it's fascinating, isn't it? And, you know, she was, she's the, she's advocating for it. When I (laughs) I spoke to her first, she's like, mum, I think you need to go for it. (laughs) And, and she's, she's so wise and she's in good hands and it, I know that, yeah, and and I, I have to say, if she'd have been distraught, it might have been a dis- different decision. Because, and, and let's also face it, I I don't plan to leave forever, but I I need to go for this amount of time, whatever is is going on, and I need to. I was conforming to what I thought I should be doing, and I can't do it any longer. It's literally like no, and I know that it it benefits her as well. This this path that I'm on is is also about. I'm not doing it to show her another way. I'm, but I it will show her another way. And and you're showing her to follow the call of her soul. You know, you're 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 teach. My guides often speak to people who are worried about their children about how. You know, children learn from in, inspiration more than anything else. Mm-hmm. And so you're teaching her to choose her soul call by doing it. Yeah. As opposed to teaching her to people please and stay stay behind for others and contort. Do you know what I mean? Like... You're showing her what will happen if you follow the call of your soul, even though you don't know what happens. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the thing, like about about five years ago, I had this other soul, soul call when I was in India, away on my own, and it was the call was you need to come out, back out here with her next year and take her out of school and put her into school here. I was like, how on earth am I going to do that? I'm not with her dad. You know, he's got a life here. Da, da, da. Anyway, next the next year, this it wasn't a simple ride, but it was much easier than I thought it would be. We all went to India and continued to share care, and she That's went to school in India. And so these, it, it changed our life in ways that we could not imagine. And we got to write a different narrative for a, a family that are, you know, not looking like the old expectations are so yeah it's I think it's really it takes a lot of courage sometimes but it's much easier when you you know it's staying true to your heart strength staying true to your soul 
and moving from the head down into the heart, which I, you know, is I'm distinguishing in my imprinting, conditioning, brain trying to keep me safe into really tuning into believing that what is right for me. Well, can, I, can I take can I take this on a slight, slightly different track, perhaps? Because um, there's something that you said in the information that you sent to us that that, that struck a chord with me, because I'm all about moments, um, and that is around fine tuning how 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 we can fine tune this in our everyday. Because you know, for people listening, they might be thinking, you know, I I want to lead more from the heart, but I I can't up sticks and move to Sri Lanka or. India or Egypt tomorrow and I can't sell my home. I mean, maybe they could, this is part of it. Maybe this is the activation, but <laughs> you did mention um, in, in that, you know, there's ways that we can fine tune, that we can listen to our heart more just on that day to day basis. What, what, where did you start with this journey and how, what does that fine tuning look like that then, you know, over time gets you to a plane on your way to Sri Lanka? Yeah, I think that's really, really important because, yes, we're hearing a story right now of me saying yes to a big soul calling. But actually, in the moment, Mm -hmm. I mean, began my journey really um, I actually don't know is the answer to that question. But I can tell you what I do do in order to come down into my heart and it might help the listeners of. And it's going to sound very simple when I say it, but I began this practice of, and, you know, look, I've, I've explored lots of different tools and wisdom traditions. And so, of course, that's fed into my experience. But one of the very simple things that I have, I do is I wake up in the morning and I place my hand on my heart, my hand on my belly, and I just keep repeating, I love you, I love you, I love you. And I say thank you to uh, and it's going to sound a little, it might sound a little bit trite or a little bit um, simplistic maybe, but I tell you what, to turn around the imprinting I had, which was denial of self and putting everybody else before me, it was such a powerful practice because it reset my, you know, I was reconditioning myself into this story of, I love you and I'm listening, I love you and I'm listening. And and that is so powerful. And I think some of the most powerful work that I have experienced tends to be very simple, but it is the consistency of showing up for it. I, I feel like that is such a powerful practice. And I'm really glad you shared it with me and with everybody listening. And it's amazing to me because literally last night when I was on the plane, I was thinking about following the soul (laughs) and this conversation (laughs) these activations always kind of come in before they happen and I was wondering or pondering on what is soul and where I landed on the plane was that that soul might just be the flow of our love it might just be the current of our love and so it's really interesting to me that you then bring that this practice into the conversation because to me the repeating of of saying I love you it is like calling the flow of your love which might also be what your soul is in this philosophy it's through the body you know through the heart through the self so I was just going to ask a quick question um or make an observation Kirsty and Karila where you were both commenting on that practice of which I love simply breathing in hand on belly and saying I love you I have to tell you it took me 10 years just to be able to do that practice when you are so deeply disconnected from yourself your soul and any kind of spiritual practice what what you just described sounds straightforward and sounds easy to do I'm here to say on the other side of the fence that is probably the most challenging thing that I've ever done me too is that hand on belly I love you (laughs) and when I did it for the first time I actually did it in child's pose at the end of a yoga session um and it just popped into my head and I could not believe 
that I had said that to myself in in that moment Mm -hmm. and something had obviously maybe physically unlocked my heart which allowed me to say it but wowzers it took me by surprise and I realized that I had not done that for a very long time ever in fact and maybe that was the start of opening up into other practices but it it's not easy for a lot of people to do that. <laughs> it's the longest <laughs> challenging, you know. It's not, you know, I think there's some other practices that can be done, journaling, you know, self-inquiry, all these things and exploring. I think everybody's got their unique path in this, and I agree. It is, you know, this took me until I was 49 to start doing. I'm now 50, right? And mm-hmm. I agree. I'm, I'm not saying it's easy, even though it sounds simple. Mm. Um, and God love us. It's not. It's not easy to be soul. You know, it's not easy to be. We're much more comfortable or safe in our unloveness than we are in our loveness. There's comfort in the discomfort because it's a familiar feeling. <laughs> The contortion is familiar. Mm. You know, the contor- to me, the contortion is all about trying to fit in because fitting in is safe. You know, it's like if I make myself the shape of everybody else, if I make myself the shape that society wants me to be, then I'll be safe because I won't actually be seen and be visible and be heard. I'll just be fitted in and when you start and it's painful but it but you're safe you know (laughs) it's painful but you're you're slotted in and when you start saying I love you calling the flow of love through you which might be what the soul is there's another way as well you know if if someone's listening going well I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna you know that's not I'm not ready for that it's like asking listening in what do I feel about this what do I want and getting to know yourself on that level is really helpful and listen and and just learn to listen because it's building up a relationship again with self and so tuning in and listening self-inquiry these journaling questions or you know very simple things so give like, me something as simple as what do I need today or what do I want to eat right now? What would I really love to eat right now? Keep it, you can get, get it into the micro, you know, you can get it really, yeah, and what, what's one thing I would love to do today? And then that starts to switch the brain into, you know, not even just the brain, but it starts to switch you into thinking about yourself, especially if you've come from a place where, um, and I'm not, you know, I'm talking about a lot of people that will um, not put themselves first because there's somehow some sort of idea that this is selfish and actually it's um you know asking what it is that you want and placing yourself in that conversation allows you to get to know who you are really because sometimes you don't know what you want if you've conformed and contorted the more you can talk the less or certainly for me the more I can talk the harder it is to hear myself well, I, I would like to use your, um, Karila, your um, root word, you know, and, and obviously contort and contortion is to twist or torque um, in French. But also when you think about contortionists, they're acrobats. And there's something about being an acrobat that being agile, supple um, is actually a beautiful thing. And it means you can move and you can twist. And when I think of an acrobat, I think of somebody being in flow. And maybe the way to look at the contortions or those blocks or twists that come along is how you move through them with with ease, with grace, and, and they don't feel stuck. They actually just feel part of the movement. And there's something really lovely about thinking about an acrobat in my head. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lovely image. <laughs> and what feats they've got, you know, it is a what they can actually do with themselves. It, it, it is a feat. 
Yeah, yeah I, I, I remember my guide saying once that, you know, what humans are amazing at, like our one of our superpowers is how adaptable we are. And they just like listed all these animals. They were like, look, you can like swim in the sea like a fish and climb a tree like a monkey. Like, look how adaptable you are compared to everything else in nature. It's one of your superpowers as uh, your collective superpowers is how adaptable you are. You can be in any climate, you can, you know, and I feel like in a way these, these, contortions are maybe the misuse of our adaptability but if we reclaim our adaptability and actually use it for flow then you've got this like acrobatic skill that you're talking about Fiona you know Mm -hmm. it's like Mm -hmm. our ability to to contort not to stay still but to contort in terms of being able to then make it a movement and part of the flow of our soul. Exactly. Yeah. And it feels beautiful. It doesn't feel stuck at all. It actually feels like it's perpetual motion and movement. It's always happening and, and you're just kind of weaving and twisting and turning and meandering around the things that come up rather than being blocked. By them and and those those powers, you know, like when we're talking about like breaking out of a conditioning or a should, like we were talking about at the beginning, like when you do make those leaps of faith, when you do go, okay, I'm going to Sri Lanka, or I'm not going to have an address. It is those same powers that you used to contort into the system that are the powers that you use to be like, okay, I'm going to have to do things differently, you know? I'm going to have to go with the flow of doing this without an address or doing this in a different culture or, you know? It's the same powers that then translate into the change. Absolutely agree with that. I don't think we, you know, this. everybody has their own journey in this experience. I don't think there's a getting it wrong necessarily do you see what i'm saying i think each soul has come to experience certain aspects and it might be that um you know the the what this soul is experiencing the story that i'm sharing activates someone else to go yes i want to do this and it do you sort of say i I just don't think we can get it wrong in inverted commas because i I know that in my past, I thought I should do a certain thing if I, you know, there was a some sort of formula to get it right in inverted commas. I, don't, I wonder if that might be useful some for some of the listeners of. It's a getting to know yourself journey. In this world. And what you came to experience. And how um, how does that translate to your work, Kirsty? How do you help people on? on that journey and is is what kind of work are you are you doing in Sri Lanka as well is there a connection between how your own soul journey has evolved and then how you support others along their path as well yeah I mean the people that I work with there tends to be a need for recalibrating around the nervous system because um that is needed and so um I the work that I do is really helping them to see where perhaps you know what their soul long is longing to do and perhaps where they have blinded themselves or are in denial to themselves around how they've built up structures it, you know it i help people disrupt their lives basically if that's what they really <laughs> want <to do. laughs> i love that <laughs> i am an official <laughs> life disruptor <laughs> um, it's like you know, it's breaking down the systems and so on that they have created in order to keep themselves safe but they really want to do something else so I help them disrupt that that's effectively what I do um and what and, would you, you say know, really, is the most what is the most important disruption tool other than the I love you practice that we've already discussed actually for most people that I work with is changing the pace of their life wow and 
de- con- decompressing from the pace that they've been going at and changing what changing the 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 landscape of what their life looks like so it's actually not about doing more and efforting more and of course you know it's actually about um coming into a different relationship with their life and slowing down actually slowing down to listen and what will you be doing in sri lanka what's the the yeah so i have a really deep connection with um plant spirits so i'm working with um a little essential oil company that they get their um some of their spice oils from sri lanka so i am helping them with that uh yeah bringing my energy into working more with the plant spirits i i love i think there's so much wisdom that i have gleaned from them over the years and my work involves working with these essential oil with essential oils and with herbs and with plants and with being in nature and this whole aspect you know as you introduced me it's like it's coming back into deep connection not only with our souls but also earth our mother and so yeah i'll be doing that in sri lanka and leading private retreats there so Uh, and would you say that the oils help you to change the pace absolutely especially working with them in the way that they help you change the spe- the, the, the the state of being as well mm-hmm. because to connect in with them there is a you slow down and you then receive what it is that they are communicating with you and and there's various ways I work with them one of them is aroma point therapy so we work with um properly diluted oils very small amount on particular energy spots on the body and you know the uh, meridian system and and that combination is powerful and so yes it's it's like the art of attention to be able to connect and hear requires a different pace to what most people have been going so you can hear and what heart. are some of the key oils that, that you use for that are there some that are the the power you know you've got the 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 the, the super seven of mushrooms is there is there a power oil connection well usually when i'm working with people there's a um there there is trauma in the system so i work with um helichrysum um on a particular point on the body which is called cv17 uh, and then there's a rooting that's needed, so vetiver, which is the long grass that you know has roots that are like twelve foot long to keep the soil oh, wow. in in place. And so then we use that on a particular spot. Um, and then often cypress comes in because cypress is a brilliant oil. Um, what you were speaking to earlier, Karila, about you know this kind of this letting go as you as you change it, it it's like a priestess oil cypress for me it's it's kind of like this rebirth death cycle you know the emergent phoenix of like of course in the in the saying yes to something there's a no to something else and it and it's a really good bridge for that um for that experience and in terms of pace that's so important because the hoarding that i was talking about like i feel like when you're <laughs> pace and space you know and it's like if you are having too many projects if you haven't said no to something else to say yes to something then you're just going at a mile a minute you know like you're not giving the the space for the pace yeah yeah and it and, feels- and let's face it that pace, that pace can come back you know if that's been your conditioning you can s- soon kind of um I've noticed in my life, maybe you two have as well, like when I've let go of something and then it's almost like I have to fill it with something else until I sort of realise, no, no, this isn't the pace I'm going. It's a process. It's de- set, yeah. definitely a process to unravel. And why do you think the oils support the process? What is it? 
Is it that they have a different rhythm? Is it that they have the rhythm of the plants? They have the pace of the plants? Like, what, why do they help? Because they open up to different perspectives and they each of them has their own medicine with a capital M and spirit, which uh, re- reminds us of our, our part in the bigger picture um, and actually of our inherent abilities to connect in with what each plant is showing us and teaching us. Um, and communicating with us and for each person it might come in a different way for some people they might experience of actually feeling an unraveling happening if they're more of a somatic person for others they receive uh, we receive messages or um, inspiration and for some it can be very subtle and they're not even really sure what happens but for example they then their creativity opens up or Mm. and then as they slow down the pace they tune more into a particular pace, like you say, of, of the plants. I think it's so, I, I think personally, I'm still learning, even though I've been on this journey mm-hmm. of actually to learning and remembering of how to be in deeper connection that way. So it's, it's yeah, I hope but, I've answered that in a, in a y- way. You have. And what's coming to me is that this human adaptability that we have is actually part of the magic of this, because if the oil contains the essence of the plant, because we are so good at adapting, when we receive the oil, we can adapt into that medicine, that pace, that life force energy, that wisdom. And so it's like our human genius meeting the plant genius and a kind of alchemical moment happening because of that contortion gift that we have. Do you see what I mean? That that means that we can take on. Yeah, we can take on what the plant has. We can emulate it, embody it, be inspired by it, dance with it, acrobat with it. And this is a lovely way to come back into your heart. You know, aroma activates a presence within you that brings you back into the present moment, which is why I find aroma so powerful. It mm. works with the limbic system of the brain. It, you know, it, it, it brings you into using our senses, brings you into the present, which is why we use it in trauma work, you know, to locate yourself in the here and now, because disassociation is so natural uh, if you're in a particular state. So when we use things like you know aroma and the plant spirit i mean you know i've gone in quite deep on this and for some it's like oh i don't really know what you're talking about but there is a very practical connection for us to work in this way with uh our brain our nervous system the plants and and also up the power of touch and deep rest and it's uh it is a process but it's very powerful hmm and so what would be the uh, appropriate aroma for this conversation? Because <laughs> I love scent as well. I think it's so powerful. What would we, what would we sprinkle in today? Have I well, got various ideas? <laughs> different listeners will have different experiences of this call, so they'll need different yeah. things. But I would say, <laughs> you know, you are feeling like you are ready to, if you're feeling like you need to root and ground vetiver use use something like this um and then use something like a citrus to help you move into inspiration to move into what it is that you want to do you know so that you don't leave yourself in leaping <laughs> and then of course rose <laughs> for the heart because of rose there we i'm go. so glad you put in rose because you know i used to not be able to wear rose and my guide said to me that, like, your, your aversion to rose is because of your lack of self-love. And then as I did affirmation practices and self-love practices and then got obsessed with wearing rose, like, you can go on a massive journey with rose and self-love. It's a really interesting one. Maybe that's a, a lovely place to, to let people <laughs> think 
about where they can bring rose and you know we're coming to spring in the northern hemisphere and I feel like flowers are beginning to bloom again there's color appearing in gardens so maybe stopping to smell a rose is a is a nice entry level just to appreciate and <laughs> and taking a moment in in the day um thank you so much for 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 joining us today um Kirsty and for for so beautifully setting intention and helping guide us us through a different type of conversation today which um was really beautiful and and you know hopefully people can just take a little moment to hand on heart and belly take a couple of deep breaths today and just see what comes up um for for them and you never know it might be buy a plane ticket to Sri Lanka and go and see Kirsty for someone that might be what comes up so I I love the yeah I love the unpredictability of what's deep in our soul that's actually calling us and it surprises us and leaves a smile on the face as crazy as it sounds I followed that call a number of times and it's a beautiful beautiful thing so thank you so much for sharing sharing that with us today so welcome I just want to say one more thing you know the way is through so whatever comes up for you within this conversation or even if it's the hand on the heart it's showing you what the way is for you to pay some more love to you know that's what I found you know the anxiety the fear this it's like where you want more love in the body so whatever comes up is to be is to be seen and not um it doesn't need to be shoved away so I wanted to just add that in thank you you, Kirsty I feel like I can feel like the transmission in this activation. There's so many aromas of love (laughs) and flows of love flowing from your energy. And it's just so beautiful. Um, Wildness is the flow of our truth. And I feel like... I feel like there's been some beautiful truths flown through this particular activation. I'm very, very nourished by it. And I'd like to ask you um, who we should speak to next. Oh, bear with me one second. It's coming. (laughs) This is pace, everyone. (laughs) This might be where you cut out the, the silence. Just give me a second. <laughs> no, hold okay, the pace. <laughs> I think you need to speak to her name is Zola, and I wonder. And I've got I can't say her surname, but I met her in Goa, and she does the most incredible uh, women's work. Our daughters went to school together. She's been on a very powerful journey herself. Zola Dubnikova, and um, and failing that. Uh, you could speak to Jem of an- Anchoring the Light. I can also introduce you there. So they're the two people that spring to mind. Thank you so much. And thank you for following the call of your soul and everything that you have just gifted this conversation. I'm very, very grateful. Mm. Thank you thank so you. much. And thank you to everybody listening. I really, you know, I, I send it out with the greatest of intentions. Um, and yeah, keep loving on yourself in any way you can, even if it's with the next sweet treat. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Hi. Hi. So, um, <laughs> How's your heart and soul feeling after that conversation? Oh gosh, I just want to talk to Kirsty all the time. Like I feel so <laughs> reset and repaced and like in the aromas of self-love. <laughs> it was beautiful. Well, there you go. Lighting sound issues and drama and the background noise of Cairo. <laughs> Wouldn't even mention that you were in Cairo, I don't think. So the life uh, force of Cairo. <laughs> we, we we do take ourselves to challenging places to have these conversations, <laughs> don't we? We don't make it easy for ourselves at all. We acrobat these conversations. We do. We are contortionists. <laughs> yeah. We're acrobats for sure. Um, <laughs> where we we try and keep in the flow. And keep things moving with ease and grace, but behind the scenes, we're like swans. 
<laughs> but um but yeah i love i love how you you know kirsty is another example of one of our beautiful guests living living their truth and you know living their calling and that can be in a simple daily practice as we were talking about that we can all do and you know i'm gonna have eggs for breakfast rather than cereal is is a form of following your heart and your soul <laughs> as well as getting on a plane to Sri Lanka for four months. And just saying I love you to yourself. Oh, gosh, and that's too hard, Karila. <laughs> just romancing yourself. Mm, romancing of self. <laughs> a romancing and romancing yourself. that that's a beautiful thing but it but it is scary like I I wasn't kidding when I said it it was like the hardest breakthrough yeah. was being able able to do that so you know we do not take lightly these conversations yeah. we do not take lightly the activations and thoughts that it can evoke um but hopefully inspire to know that you work through it. Like Kirsty said, it's you work with it, you work through it, not against it. We're not contorting, we're, we're, we're flowing with it. And life versus flow. Yeah, it's not stuck. It's not blocked. There is always energy. There is always movement at any given time and it's easier to go downhill <laughs> and follow the stream than it is to try and paddle upwards like we tend to do <laughs> on a daily basis we're just kind of um yeah not trying to get in our own way is one of the easiest ways to feel that but it's also as we've already said it can be challenging and that making that first step of release and letting go hmm. And changing the pace in order to do so. Well, good luck with that in Cairo. Um, <laughs> Me and Cairo are on a different pace now. <laughs> so until the next time, Karila, when we'll turn the pace up or down or not, depending on who we have with us. Um, may the life force be with you in Egypt. May the life force be with you in England. <laughs> We hope this conversation has topped up your life force energy. If it has, then please help us spread the life force. Like, share, subscribe, all of that. <laughs> and may the life force be with all of us.